So we are back at our our R22 AC system with a fixed metering device or piston style metering device. The system is operating properly. It's properly charged. Thermostat's calling for cooling. Our condenser coil is our condenser outside here is blowing hot air out of the top. It's a nice day outside, probably 115 degrees on the side of this house. Maybe not that high, but pretty doggone hot. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have a uh, our high and low side gauge is hooked up to the uh, service ports. We have our temperature probes hooked up here. Remember, these service ports and the pre corresponding pressures and temperatures I want you to remember that this is a snapshot of what's happening in the center of the condenser coil and the center of the evaporator coil, not a snapshot of the refrigerant sitting right here where the hoses are hooked up. All right, so remember that. So properly charged R22 system, 243 PSIG on the high, 70 PSIG on the low. We have good temperatures and we have good subcooling and superheat 13 degrees each kind of makes it easy for this demonstration so this is properly charged we are going to pull out some refrigerant by clicking over here on our recovery jug and look at what happens to our superheat and subcooling let's go back there Let, pay attention up here and the superheat and subcooling as we pull out ref, refrigerant subcooling drops by 10 degrees and look at here our superheat just shoots through the roof so when when a system is undercharged you're going to see low low to no subcooling and high superheat and that if that's on a piston or fixed orifice system now the reason that this subcooling decreases is this and this is the hard part for me to really get my head wrapped around when i first started learning this but on a properly charged system, the refrigerant, liquid refrigerant, is backed up into the condenser, into the latter part of the condenser coil right here. And it, and it spends some time right there, and it sheds that sensible heat and picks up that subcooling. So when we have an undercharged system, there's not enough refrigerant in the system to back it up. So instead of backing up where it should over here, that liquid refrigerant blows through that condenser and shooting up here to the towards the evaporator coil. It doesn't spend the time it should in this part of the condenser to pick up that additional subcooling. It just blows right on through there. So subcooling is low, superheat is high. The superheat is high because there is not enough refrigerant to fill the evaporator coil and it's boiling off long before it should in the evaporator coil it might only be cooling one half of the evaporator and then the refrigerant is 100 percent vapor and then it picks up more superheat from the indoor air than it is designed to do for that system the other thing that happens when we undercharge a system is the system pressures and temperatures decrease and you can see right here the the evaporator coil is 25 degrees Fahrenheit under the right conditions a undercharged system the evaporator coil will in fact freeze and you can see that because it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit here so that is a look at what your pressure gauges and your temperatures and pressures are going to tell you on an R22 fixed orifice undercharge system.